In this video, I'm comparing the newest trims for the Toyota Highlander and the Hyundai Palisade, the Highlander XSE versus the Palisade Calligraphy. How do these new 2021 trims stack up against each other? Let's find out. Before getting started, this is an overview video comparing the two. If you want the full review video on either car, they will be linked at the end of this video. Number one, exterior. The current generation of the Highlander that was introduced last year introduces a curvier look versus the previous generation. The XSE builds upon that and it is the most aggressive and boldest Highlander you could buy today. The front of the XSE is almost completely different from all other Highlanders. The black middle grille is smaller and has an octagon shape and the lower bumper is basically all grille with a unique looking silver chin spoiler built in. The side profile of the XSE looks aggressive due to the black trim pieces replacing the usual chrome. This includes the window surrounds, the roof rails, and the black mirrors. There are also exclusive 20 inch wheels that complements the look. The back of the Highlander XSE has a similar look to other trims, but it does have smoked LED taillights. There's a large spoiler on top and a large chin spoiler underneath that matches the front and there's dual exhaust tips. This is the very first for this generation. As for the Palisade, it was introduced in 2020 as a brand new model and has been a big sales winner for Hyundai. Last year's top trim level to Limited has been toppled by this year's calligraphy. The calligraphy's exterior is only slightly different than other levels. It's hard to notice. The front grille is a little bit different with triangle shapes within and the lower bumper receives a lot more silver cladding that matches the silver grille surround. There's also very little square added to reveal a bit more daytime running lights. The side profile of the calligraphy showcases a big boxy look covered with aluminum. The 20 inch wheels are specific to the calligraphy and that's about the only change on the side. The back also goes pretty much unchanged. There is a third brake light that is slightly longer and a little bit more light reflectors on the lower bumper. Since looks are subjective, this category is a draw. Here's a side-by-side -side shot of both cars for you to compare. So which one do you prefer? Number two, powertrain. The Highlander XSE is powered by a single motor, a 3.5 liter V6 producing 295 horsepower and 263 pound-feet of torque. This engine is mated to an eight-speed automatic and you could choose either front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive system is dynamic torque vectoring, which means it can divert power front to back and side to side. Fuel economy with the all-wheel drive XSE is 20, 27, 23, 23 miles per gallon combined. There are several driving modes and multi-terrain modes to the Highlander XSE. For driving modes, there are Sport, Eco, and Normal. These will tweak the throttle and adjust the drive. And for multi-terrain, there are Mud and Sand, Rock and Dirt, Snow, and Normal. These will adjust the all-wheel drive system and throttle for different surfaces. Now, the Palisade Calligraphy and all Palisades are powered by a single motor, a 3.8 liter V6 producing 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. Almost identical to the Highlander, but slightly less. This engine is also mated to an 8-speed automatic. The calligraphy can only be configured with all-wheel drive. Now, the fuel economy for the calligraphy is 1924-21, 21 miles per gallon combined. So, the combined fuel economy for the Palisade calligraphy is about 2 miles per gallon less than the Highlander XSE. The Palisade comes with several driving modes as well, including Sport, Eco, Comfort, Snow, and Smart. Smart is where the Palisade will automatically adjust the gear shift intervals, based on recent driving patterns. Zero to 60 time for both cars are very similar with the Highlander edging out by 0.1 seconds, with the Highlander XSE around 7.1 seconds and the Palisade calligraphy around 7.2 seconds. So for powertrain, the Highlander XSE gets the slight edge. Even though the power figures and acceleration is similar, it does get two miles per gallon better with overall fuel economy. The Highlander also gets a few extra terrain modes to help it get out of sticky situations. Number three, interior quality. For this category, let's start out with the Palisade Calligraphy because it has the best and most luxurious cabin in the segment. The seats are covered in soft Napa leather with beautiful quilted stitching and it's matched on the door panels. This is both for the front and rear seats. The front dash is beautiful. There's great use of aluminum, black trim pieces, and the dual screens. One screen replaces the gauge cluster and one screen is used for the infotainment system. 
Both are very bright and both have very nice interface. The infotainment screen is not the biggest in the class, but it's very easy to use and the widgets can be configured on the home screen. The floating center console puts the controls right at your fingertips and there's also a ton of space for your drinks, phone, and other things. On top, there's a dual moonroof design and it lets a lot of light in for both front and rear passengers. Everywhere you can feel inside the Palisade calligraphy is covered with soft leather or some kind of soft material. The cabin really feels like a luxury car. As for the Highlander XSE, the interior quality is not as luxurious as the top Highlander trim levels, nor the Palisade calligraphy, but there is good functionality and a bit more color, especially if you opt for the red leather interior. The red leather interior definitely adds some pop to the seats and door panels. However, if you opt for the black interior, the material is downgraded to leatherette for some reason. Up front, the dash design is a big upgrade from the previous generation with more of a driver-centric design to the infotainment screen. The gauge cluster has a large 7-inch screen to display the essentials, but it's not fully digital. The infotainment system comes with an 8-inch touchscreen that works okay. It's somewhat responsive with a little lag. There's no customization like the Palisade. And unfortunately, the larger 12.3-inch screen from the higher Highlander trims is not available with the XSE. Unlike the Palisade calligraphy, the Highlander XSE has many areas with hard plastic, such as the center console and door panels and even the dash. XSE's interior was downgraded in some ways to make up for the revised looks and suspension. For this category, the Palisade calligraphy wins hands down. Number 4. Features and Technology the Palisade Calligraphy comes jam-packed with almost every single option or feature one could ask for. I've already mentioned about the dual screens, but that's complemented with a very nice heads-up display. There is a 360 surround view system and a camera system that can display both blind spots when making a signal. There's memory seats, heated ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, wireless Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto connectivity. There's dual moon roofs, heated and ventilated rear seats, sun shades and climate controls for the second row passengers, power folding second and third row, rear leveling suspension, and lastly, a hands-free power tailgate. As for the Highlander XSE, it is well equipped, but nowhere near the level of the Palisade calligraphy. Up front, you do have the 7-inch info screen in the gauge cluster and an 8-inch infotainment screen. The 360-view camera system is not available, nor is a heads-up display in the XSE. Memory seats, ventilated front seats, and heated steering wheel are not available. The Highlander XSE offers Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but not the wireless functionality. There's a single moonroof on top and second row passengers do get climate controls and sunshades, but no heated or ventilated seats. The second and third row seats do fold down, but manually. That can be a plus, in fact, because the power function in the Palisade is quite slow. And lastly, there is a power lift gate, but no hands-free option. So as for features and technology, hands down, Palisade calligraphy wins by landslide. Number five, the drive. With the Highlander XSE, the drive is comfortable and quiet, and there's a good amount of power. The steering is adequate, but I honestly thought it would be heavier since the XSE's emphasis was not only on looks, but also on the sport tuned suspension and revised steering. During my drive, I couldn't tell any difference between the steering with the XSE versus a Limited or Platinum. The sport tuned suspension is comfortable and soaks up the bumps nicely, and the Highlander XSE also takes the curves and bends well. Again, like the steering, it's hard to tell the difference between the XSE suspension and a normal Highlander suspension. The brakes feel good, and same goes with throttle resistance. Response. Under full acceleration, the Highlander XSE felt lively and definitely not underpowered. The 8-speed did a good job in all gears. Finally, the Highlander XSE was quiet at all speeds. With the Palisade, the drive is pretty much perfect in my opinion and mimics a luxury car. The steering has a decent weight to it and it's very precise with very little steering play. The steering wheel itself also felt fantastic. The suspension soaked up all the bumps and combined with the comfortable seats made me feel like I was driving on a cloud. The Palisade collision does have a very comfortable ride, but around corners, I did feel a little bit more body roll than the Highlander XSE. The brake and throttle response was pretty much perfect. Both made me enjoy the Palisade no matter if I'm stopping or going. The engine and 8-speed felt great around town and when accelerating. The Palisade felt just as quick as the Highlander XSE as well. The cabin is very, very quiet and visibility is fantastic. For this category, I'm giving the win to the Palisade Calligraphy. Even though the Highlander XSE provides a great ride and 
one drives well, the Palisade was just better in almost every single category. Number six, size and price. Comparing the two side by side, the Palisade is about an inch longer with a wheelbase that is two inches longer. The Palisade is also about two inches wider and about an inch taller. Despite the fact they are similar in size, the inside of the Palisade feels significantly bigger than the Highlander. Room in all rows and cargo room is much bigger. This could be a good thing or bad thing, however. For some, driving the Palisade may be too much car as the size does make it hard to navigate tight spots and for parking. Also, it could be intimidating to drive because of the sheer size. The Highlander feels more nimble and is smaller. The size really depends on what you're looking for, something bigger or smaller. As for the price, the 2021 Toyota Highlander XSE with all-wheel drive configured has an MSRP as $43,355. However, with the optional premium audio added on, the price is over $45,000. The price for a 2021 Hyundai Palisade Calligraphy is $47,750, so roughly $2,800 more than the Highlander XSE. If you step down to the Palisade Limited, which pretty much comes with everything I've just mentioned, the difference between price drops to around only $1,800. For this category, I'll call it a tie. The larger dimensions and space for the Palisade may be good for some, but not so good for others. The higher price for the Palisade is a con, but you're getting so much more than the Highlander XSE. Number seven, reliability. I normally don't cover reliability, but felt compelled to do so when comparing these two SUVs. On Consumer Reports, the 2020 Hyundai Palisade received a score of 87. This is a score compiled from Consumer Report members. This is the second highest for midsize SUVs. Now, on Consumer Reports, the 2020 Highlander received a score of 86, one point lower than the Palisade. Keep in mind, this is information based on limited numbers from one year's worth of surveys. Toyota's reputation for reliability is the cornerstone to their image, and their brand loyalty. Highlanders have been very reliable in the past and should be no different with the Highlander XSE. Now, Hyundai's reputation have been improving over the last few years, but the Palisade is a brand new model with very little data behind it. Only time will tell if the Palisade could keep up with the Highlander's high standards. For this category, I'm giving a slight edge to the Highlander simply because it is a Toyota. So to conclude, the Palisade takes three categories while the Highlander takes two. And there's two categories that's a toss-up, tied for you to decide. Overall, you can't go wrong with either SUV, but which one are you looking at and which one would you choose? Leave your thoughts below. Thanks for watching. Hit the like, subscribe to the channel, and check out the full review video for both of these cars by clicking on the links now or on driversonlyrankings.com. Take care.